When FTX went down, it took a lot of esports money with it, but now it might do something else too. It might change the way we think about how streamers and YouTubers endorse products online, and it could have implications for esports more generally. That's because there's a new $1 billion class action lawsuit aimed directly at the influencers who were paid to promote FTX online. Let's take a look. Okay, so if you use the internet, you've probably heard of the collapse of FTX, one of the largest crypto exchanges in the world. The collapse in November had immediate impacts because FTX was burning a lot of money to advertise itself basically everywhere, including esports. We're talking massive, multi-year, multi-million dollar deals with some of the biggest players in the space. I'll come back to that in a bit, but it's important because of esports is, well, recent troubles. Anyways, one thing that FTX spent a lot of money on was influencer advertisements, specifically financial advice influencers. And now a new lawsuit alleges that these influencer promotions were a big part of how FTX was able to grow so big so quickly. The suit filed in the Southern District of Florida targets a number of social media influencers and YouTubers who were paid to promote FTX and their yield-bearing accounts. Long story very short, these were basically accounts that FTX offered where you could deposit your cryptocurrency in and earn like a yearly yield. These yields were pretty competitive compared to other financial options that you might've had. Some would say maybe, you know, too lucrative. And when FTX disappeared, well, so did the crypto. So the lawsuit basically says that these YouTubers, some of whom have millions of subscribers, by the way, should be held liable for either one, failing to disclose the situation at FTX accurately, or two, for basically having this reason to be biased, also known as being paid, and not disclosing the exact amount of that reason. The lawsuit also points out that these standards are justifiable because as early as 2017, the US Securities and Exchange Commission was warning that these kinds of products might very well be considered securities, a specific kind of financial instrument. If they were, certain rules and standards would apply under the law like they would need to be registered. And if you were promoting one, you would need to disclose how much you got paid. Anyways, that's enough financial garbage for now. The question of whether this lawsuit can succeed though is open because it's not clear that these influencers would qualify as an agent or employee in the relevant section of Florida law. So the primary plaintiff of this suit is the same as another high profile FTX case which is filed against the celebrities that promoted it, including people like Tom Brady and Larry David. Side note, I read that Shaq is like holed up in his house to avoid getting served that lawsuit or something. And man, I just wanna say, it's not actually Chris Paul trying to get you. Hello police, Chris Paul trying to beat me up. Okay, enough joking around though. What does this mean for esports? Well, frankly, it doesn't seem likely that this lawsuit or one like it would expand to esports. Riot Games definitely promoted FTX because they had a deal to do so, and so did TSM, but they're not exactly financial advice influencers, and it's gonna be hard to link either of them to a discussion of yield-bearing accounts, I guess. And again, it's not clear that either of these legal cases will actually move forward. A judge could decide that the celebrities and influencers just don't meet the definition of agent or employee under this Florida law. And that's kind of one direction that some of the accused have taken so far. In a discussion with CoffeeZilla, who has a far more in-depth video on the lawsuit specifically, if you want to go that direction, Kevin Pafrath, who runs the YouTube channel Meet Kevin, argued that his messaging around crypto was clear regardless of the sponsorship. There needs to be a, a better there needs to be a lot more diligence in when sponsorships are made uh, with creators. Yeah, because you guys are dealing with finances. This isn't like, this isn't a NordVPN ad where if things go wrong, you know, a, something happens. This is like, if something goes wrong, people's entire livelihoods are at stake. And for better or for worse, you guys are seen as uh, the experts. And so you guys are held to that expert standard. 
individually, I've always said, look, crypto is extremely speculative and that it should represent a tiny portion of your portfolio, if anything at all. On top of that, it's also incumbent upon the individual to take some responsibility that we know not your keys, not your crypto. That's been made abundantly clear. That's probably enough about crypto because, at least in my opinion, I don't think Riot is going to be facing a lawsuit over the FTX gold differential or whatever anytime soon. So we're left with the most obvious kind of damage, the massive withdrawal of money from the esports space. We've generally seen many teams cutting back as the year continues, and it feels like that's probably going to be a trend. At the same time, it presents opportunities for other entities with money, for example, Saudi Arabia, to spend these on tournaments. As esports tries desperately to monetize itself, it remains a haven for these kinds of non-traditional and some might say ugly investment. Take for example, the Gamers 8 CSGO tournament, an event set to take place this August that boasts a $1 million prize pool, just a bit less than the last Valve major. I think this phenomenon, sometimes called sports washing, or in our case, esports washing, I guess, merits a video all on its own. But you can see how openings like this can be created, especially if prize pools elsewhere in esports remain where they are or even recede slightly. From my personal point of view, crypto was never going to be a sustainable long-term cash injection into esports. I could still be proven wrong, I, I'm very aware of that, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be. It's unfortunate that this crypto crash coincided with some other difficult moments for esports, including the lack of investor confidence in projections of years past, as well as the general economic downturn and the reduction in advertising spending that something like that can bring. And with franchises in major leagues for sale and even some of the biggest players paring back their involvement in some of their esports, what lesson should we take from all this? Well, maybe the lesson is that the existence of a coveted advertiser demographic does not imply the existence of an easy way to monetize them. That's been one of the really difficult things after all, getting esports fans to fork over for esports. Sure, maybe you'll pay the developer for an esports skin, and if they're lucky, the org will even get a pretty generous cut of that. But for every fan who owns a closet full of jerseys, there are probably 24 of them who've never spent a cent on esports and will never have to. And while advertising can bring in some money, esports is missing a major revenue source for traditional sports leagues, which is, of course, their share of the broadcast rights which they sell to a network so that that network can air it. Another source is having a physical stadium or arena, having in-person events where you sell tickets, merch, concessions, all of that good stuff. But in esports, it doesn't seem like that will happen in exactly the same way either. And like my colleague Keith pointed out in his recent video, orgs are now looking at new ways to build a sustainable presence in esports. Whether those are content creation, new products, or new areas of business, we're seeing a bit of an upheaval. Just yesterday, a report from Play.gg stated that Heroic was seeking an urgent cash injection before summer 2023 in order to keep operating. It's an example of the somewhat obvious point that a team's performance doesn't automatically lead to revenue. And of course, there are still crypto companies in the space, although it's not clear exactly how long that will be the case. Coinbase is maybe the most prominent one now, as they inked a four-year deal with Team Liquid about a year and a half ago, they also recently posted about their plans for the coming year. Coinbase is facing scrutiny of its own, just like all crypto companies at this point, but certainly nothing that suggests an FTX scenario. Still, it's clear that for the US government in dealing with crypto, this party's over. But for esports overall, I'm optimistic. Sure, things are rough now, but the games themselves are still incredible and compelling. That hasn't changed even if the way that esports works might have to in the future. I wanted to tell this story. I don't know if I can tell this. I think I can tell this story. Can I tell this story? I don't know. I went to the apothecary and uh, I was in there, right? And uh, actually, no, this, this, this story is no good. I thought the story's better. And then I started like talk. I, this is actually the, I, anyway, anyways, I was, I'm not even, I can't even. Have you have like, okay, but like, I, I just, okay. 